Sports Afield magazine. The Shooting Sports America. Brought to you by Remington Arms. Blunt Sporting Equipment Division. And Chevy Truck. Hi, I'm Gritz Gresham, shooting editor of Sports Afield magazine. You know, it wasn't that long ago that guns were a part of everyday American life. In fact, shooting, good marksmanship, is one of our oldest and most popular sporting traditions. But what about today? Has this tradition endured? Is shooting still one of our favorite sports? And if so, what's the shooting all about these days? Who's involved and why? From the earliest colonial settlements through the settling of the American West, hunting has always been at the heart of our sporting tradition. And when the leaves turn and there's a Christmas to the air, I still can't think of a better way to spend a day outdoors than with my dog and a favorite shotgun. Truth is, even today, some 20 million Americans head for the fields each fall. Sure, hunting is still one of our most popular outdoor pastimes, but these days, there's also a whole new flavor to the shooting scene. And one of the newest of these shooting sports is sporting clays, a game where shooters face clay targets launched at different angles and elevations from shooting positions laid out in a natural setting. And whether veteran or newcomer, this game can be enjoyed by everyone who likes to shoot. I hunt mostly quail and dove, and as opposed to trap and skeet shooting, where you basically stay in one position, the sporting plays, you get all the different angles like you do in actual field situations, and I find that it really helps me. I make a point to go out to the range and shoot a good bit right before the season starts in September. Off pass. And generally, the course will come close to resembling uh, what the, the birds are for that particular territory. Uh, if uh, you're shooting a lot of ducks in that area, then generally a lot of the targets will be incoming. If uh, a lot of your, your uh, birds that are hunted in that particular area are going to be quail or grouse or something like that, that are birds that get up low and, and fly away, then you'll do that. If it's a dove hunting area, there'll be a lot of crossing shots. So uh, generally you'll find that the courses are going to simulate the type of birds that are shot in that particular vicinity of the country. I started hunting when I was five, and I just started shooting sporting plays, and I love it. There are some tough youngsters out here, and they're going to be somebody to be reckoned with here shortly. In the next few years, we're going to see a lot of good shooters coming up. Oh. And as more and more women have become involved in shooting, they found sporting clays a game that's right up their alley. Nice there are many women that are as good or better than the men, that it's hand-eye coordination, and uh, it's not a matter of strength or endurance. It's one of the greatest sports in the world for women, and I'll tell you why. A woman doesn't have to run faster than anybody else to be good at it. She doesn't have to be stronger than anybody else. All she has to do is stand in one spot and say, pull, bang. And that's all that's required. Normal eye-hand coordination. Any woman's got it. If she can turn an egg over in a skillet without breaking the yolk, she can be a great shotgun shooter. We thought we had a disadvantage, but we don't really. The thing I like about sporting clays is it really tests your eye-hand coordination. It's very satisfying to shoot the, bird, the clay pigeons and see them fall. And it's challenging. It's not easily accomplished. And I like the challenge. You're all over it. Just behind it. Sporting clays is a wonderful sport. It's something that you can do alone and compete against yourself. It's something you can do with your family or also with your friends. Pull! Oh! Indeed, when it comes to sporting clays, a group of women in Houston, Texas, have taken matters into their own hands, so to speak. They've organized the country's first women's only shooting event and now annually attract some 200 women to this charity event. For some reason, always associated shooting with hunting. And uh, didn't realize you could have so much fun just shooting, just for the sport of shooting the clay. Indeed, women are now the fastest growing segment of this challenging clay target game. We'll be right back. Sporting oh. clays competition has long been a popular sport throughout Europe, South America, and Australia. And this year, for the first time, Shooters from around the world had a chance to compete in the U.S. at the 1992 World Championship held in Ludlow, Vermont at the Okemo Mountain Ski Resort. Over 500 competitors took part in this championship event, which was won by top British shooter George Digweed.
No doubt about it. Sporting clays is one of the fastest growing of all the shooting sports. And literally hundreds of clubs across the country now have sporting clays facilities. Of course, sporting clays is very much the new kid on the block. When it comes to clay target games, the granddaddy of them all is trap shooting. Oh. From the days of Annie Oakley, trap shooting, where clay targets fly away from the shooter at different angles, has been America's premier clay target sport. And each year in August, trap shooters from around the country gather in Vandalia, Ohio, for the big event in this game, the Grand American Trap Shooting Tournament. We have more than 6,000 competitors here at the Grand. The Amateur Trap Shooting Association has over 100,000 members shooting across the United States. There are probably one million or more shooters that enjoy our recreation to some degree. It is, in fact, the largest shotgun shooting sport in the world. I shoot here with my husband. We shoot at all of our local clubs in Illinois during the year and work towards this. This is the uh, World Series of trap shooting. This is what every trap shooter works their whole year for. I've been shooting for 10 years now, coming to the Grand. Just got Matt started this summer. Now he's beating me already. Whether husband and wife or father and son, competitive trap shooting is enjoyed by everyone from teenagers to grandmothers. And during the 10 days of the Grand, shooters of all ages will fire at more than 4 million clay targets, part of the over 500 million clay targets shot at each year by shotgun shooters across the country. And for the winners, a trophy at the Grand is like hitting a home run in the World Series. Clay target shooting, both trap and skeet, is also becoming an increasingly popular sport at the collegiate level. In fact, each spring, college and university teams from around the country compete in a three-day tournament for the national collegiate title for both individuals and teams. And in these games, size or brute strength are not necessarily the keys to success. In uh, shooting sports, you have girls shooting, kids eight years old shooting, uh, and people 65 years old shooting. Physical uh, size or strength doesn't really have a lot to do with the game. Uh, again, the game is, is more at least 50% in your head, and the other 50% in your hands and your coordination and your eyes. And perhaps unique to collegiate sports, this is a competition in which both men and women can actually compete on the same team. Uh, we're seeing a lot more of it on the East Coast than what we had before, and it's such a great sport to build self-discipline and so forth, and the kids are off, they get into shooting, we don't have to worry about grades-wise like the other sports, they're always very self-disciplined, and it's just super sport, and uh, this is the collegiate championships are just a super, super sporting event. And while trap and skeet shooting may not be big-time collegiate sports, they certainly make up for any lack of size in team spirit and enthusiasm. Time was, being a good shot with a rifle often meant the difference between dinner and going hungry. Sure, times have changed a lot since then, but being able to hit the mark to be a good rifle marksman is still a challenge enjoyed by millions of Americans. And for hundreds of thousands of shooters, reliving part of their history using authentic muzzle-loading rifles and gear is half the fun. Many of the rifles used today are truly magnificent examples of the gun maker's art. Of course, for many participants, the fun is not only in loading and shooting these historic firearms, but also in reliving a part of our history. Every year, thousands of black powder shooters from around the country gather for classic mountain men rendezvous, authentic encampments with period costumes and gear, as well as all kinds of muzzle-loading competitions. So, who enjoys muzzle-loading shooting? Well, just about everyone. We have mountain people down here, we have doctors, we have dentists, we have uh, engineers, we have lawyers, we have school teachers, uh, we have home builders, we have them from every walk of life. Getting away from the telephone, getting away from the television, uh, getting away from everything is kind of uh, going into another world throw all modern conveniences aside and just get back to nature. Really, really enjoy the stars looking through the lodge at night. Put you right in the right spot. And while these guns may be considered antiques, at closer ranges they are every bit as accurate as their modern counterparts. 
I hear you, horse. For today's rifle shooter, one of the most challenging games didn't start here in the U.S., but came to us from south of the border. The Mexicans call it Silhouettas Metallicas. And for thousands of shooters in the States, this game has caught on with a clang and a bang. Silhouette shooting isn't for rifles alone. These days, more and more handgun shooters have discovered this long-range shooting challenge. And there are now a variety of handgun silhouette classes, including those for special target handguns used in the Unlimited class. Miniature silhouette targets for 22 rifles also provide an exciting challenge for young shooters and are a great way to get the whole family involved. Well, for our family, silhouettes is a, a total family sport because uh, I'm into high power. My wife is into Hunter Pistol, and the kids are into the 22s. Pretty soon, I'll be a better shooter than my dad. I am going to be a winner this year. One of the things I like is my wife and I can shoot the sport together. And in the past six years, I have not beaten her once. She's triple A, and I'm double A. Believe me. Hitting a metal target smaller than a coffee cup saucer at over 100 yards is no small feat. But for avid handgun marksmen, long-range accuracy is only one of the challenges in an array of new handgun games that have revolutionized handgun shooting. Perhaps the best example of these new handgun sports is an all-round challenge of precision, long-range, and speed shooting. It's called the Masters International. Each year, the Masters attracts many of the finest handgun competitors from around the country and the world. This annual event just may well be the ultimate test in good handgun marksmanship. Shooters must fire an Olympic-style precision event from the standing position at targets not much larger than a silver dollar. Then it's over to the long-range event, a series of metal targets set out in different banks all the way out to 200 meters, an incredibly long distance for handgun shooting. In this timed event, both accuracy and speed are essential. And it's amazing just how many of these competitors knock down most all of their targets. Yes, there's something contagious about the Masters. Once you've seen it, you've got to try it yourself. This is my first Masters. We were here last year. I watched my husband shoot last year, and this is my first year uh, competing in the Masters. A lot of fun. The speed event at the Masters is no doubt the most exciting of all. Here, shooters face a series of knockdown metal plates set out in different configurations. The objective? Knock down as many plates just as fast as you can. And for the very best, that translates into drawing from a holster and hitting five targets in under three seconds. Now that may seem to be a Hollywood stunt, but it's what makes the Masters the Super Bowl of handgun competition. How about them apples? You like that, huh? <laughs> I like that. Hey! No question about it. There's a whole lot going on in shooting these days. Even an event that combines handgun, rifle, and shotgun shooting all in one. Yeah. This all-around tournament is called the Chevy Truck Sportsman's Team Challenge. Begin. The handgun portion involves three separate stages of fire, shot as a team relay event. And with the highly visible targets, spectators can easily follow the action. Uh, most uh, target shooting, why well, you make a little hole in the paper and nobody can see it, including yourself. But here, you, something happens immediately that makes it a lot more fun. From a spectator standpoint, it's superlative. That's the way the targets pop, if you will, more than in most competitions. So I think it has a more visual impact and perhaps excitement for the uh, spectators. In the rifle event, teams shoot together and have only two minutes to knock down targets that have been set out in banks of 10 from 45 yards out to 90 yards. 
And just who has the edge when it comes to this type of all-around shooting competition? We pistol shooters find it much easier to shoot shotgun than a shotgun shooter finds it to shoot pistol. I think the competition really will be governed by the good all-around shooter. I think that the, uh, the guys who are just good in one event and taking it are probably a few and far between. I think you have to be an all-around top gun to win this event. Mixing the disciplines definitely makes it more difficult. Uh, put the long gun events in, shotgun and rifle, makes it more demanding. It's a lot of fun. Oh. This is a double load two. Okay, here we Quail go. hunters would just do really well at some of those double events and those flurry events. And actually, some of the real structured competitors that have shot lots of registered trap and skeet, uh, they'd have trouble with that because they're so disciplined to the flight of that bird. So the, the field hunter, I think, has an advantage. He goes to it with an open mind and just goes out and kills some birds. Ha -ha! See that, Chip? <laughs> <laughs> excitement department, nothing can beat the shotgun flurry. 60 clay targets thrown from three machines. The targets flying one right after the other just over the shooter's heads. That shotgun flurry is 30 seconds of the most intense fun that you can have. It's as fast as you can do it. Uh, birds are just coming right over you and you're trying to load, you know you're missing some. As soon as you raise your shotgun up, there's always something to shoot at. It doesn't get any more fun or any more intense. So whether you're a shotgun, handgun, or rifle shooter, or all three, and if you like fun and fast action shooting, you just may want to give the Chevy Truck Team Challenge a try. You know, for some, shooting is a serious athletic pursuit, involving countless hours of practice for both international and Olympic competition. To talk about this side of the sport, I'd like for you to meet Marty Rudolph, not only the marketing director for the U.S. Biathlon Association, but also trustee for the Women's Sports Foundation. Hi, Marty. Hi, Gritz. You know, I travel a lot, and everywhere I go, it seems I see more and more women on shooting ranges. You know, I've noticed that, too, and I think part of the reason is that more and more women are participating in virtually every sport, and shooting is just no exception. Uh, in fact, on the competitive side of the game, women have a long history of some really top performances. Yes, I just noticed that uh, Margaret Murdoch was just inducted into the Women's Sports Hall of Fame. Isn't that terrific? First woman shooter. Yeah, I remember in 76 when she was tied for the gold medal in the rifle competition and walked away with the silver. And, you know, it wasn't just the women that she was competing against, but the men also. Boy, that's true. That was an amazing feat. You know, it's just such a shame that so many people have negative feelings about guns. Well, you know, Gritz, I had a negative feeling about guns for a while until I had a chance to spend some time with the competitors and try it myself and see how much fun it was. And I think that uh, if more people had some awareness and could try the sport out, their attitude would change, too. You know, it's not just that women shooters don't get much publicity. None of the international shooters do. You're right. If you uh, were to ask the man on the street about the Olympic Games, the last sport he would mention is shooting, when in fact shooting plays a major role in both the winter and the summer games. I'm sure it would surprise a lot of people to know that shooting competition has always been a part of the modern Olympic Games, and that today there are 13 shooting events in the summer games alone. All of the shooting disciplines are represented, including high-precision air rifle and small-bore rifle competition, both of which include separate events for women shooters. Not only do men and women compete, but so do shooters of practically all ages, such as 19-year-old Scott Swinney, who participated in his first Olympics in the 88 Seoul Games. I got started when I was eight years old. My father bought me a BB gun for Christmas, and my mother didn't like it. She wanted me to play piano, so but it just ended up this way. I never thought starting out with a BB gun would get me on the Olympic team. I never did. Olympic shooting events also include those for rapid-fire pistol, as well as shotgun events in both trap and skeet. How have U.S. shooters fared in the Olympics over the years? Well, I certainly think it's fair to say that we've established an enviable record. Our men and women shooters now have a combined total of 43 gold medals, which ranks shooting in third place among all U.S. teams in the modern games. In the Winter Games, shooting is represented in a truly unique sport called biathlon. 
Here, athletes must combine two entirely different but equally demanding disciplines, cross-country skiing and rifle marksmanship. While not yet a household word in the U.S., biathlon is a tremendously popular sport in other parts of the world. Indeed, more nations send athletes to participate in biathlon than in any of the other Winter Olympic events. Modeled after the winter sport of biathlon, the summer version of this dual sport substitutes running for cross-country skiing. This fast-growing new sport is called summer biathlon, and it has really caught on with both runners and shooters all across the country. It was a lot more grueling than I had thought, because when you stop to shoot, you have to hold your breath when you normally would be... <laughs> you know, taking in air, and uh, we do just the opposite. There's a whole new physiology involved in it. Uh, you know, you have to run the two miles to get the, the blood going to your muscles, then you come in and stop, you're standing still. So now you have all the blood going through your skin to cool you down, then you start up again, and your, your muscles don't have the blood. It's really challenging. It was really fun. I like the shooting better than the running. No, Annie Oakley, but it was fun. The hardest part was just trying to keep my glasses from fogging up. Lyle Nelson, four-time U.S. Olympic biathlon competitor, is amazed at just how fast this sport has taken off. It's amazing to me when I realized that just two years ago, there was only a dozen people who even knew what summer biathlon was. Since then, hundreds of people have competed in the 20 or 30 regional and national events that we've had. And now, there's lots of people. They aren't road racers and they aren't track runners. They're summer biathletes. They specialize in the sport. And Holly Farr, also a world-class biathlete, is equally enthusiastic about summer biathlon. I think the sport of summer biathlon in four to five years from now will be having several thousand people competing during the summer all across the nation. I think it's just going to do nothing but grow. It's really exciting. It's a lot of fun. It involves a whole myriad of uh, different skills and, and abilities. And uh, it's something you can really work at to improve at. Uh, and on any level, it's, it's really enjoyable. I considered myself a miler, but now I, I really consider myself a biathlete. I'm, I'm really hooked. And he's certainly not alone. In just two years, summer biathlon has attracted several thousand participants to a race series that now includes over 50 competitions throughout the country. The shooting sports in America their tradition has not only endured, it's actually grown stronger. In fact, there's more going on in shooting sports today than ever before. And whether it's one of the new shooting games or one of the traditional sports, shooting is attracting not only a growing, but a changing audience as well. So who's involved? Well, just about everybody. But these days, also a whole lot of people who are brand new to shooting. And what's the attraction? Well, I think they've discovered what I've known for more than a few years. Shooting whether it's trying to smoke a fast-flying clay target or trying to zero in on a small metal disc after running a mile and a half is just plain a whole lot of fun. Come, Chuck. The Shooting Sports, America. Brought to you by Ruger. Thompson Center. and Sports Afield magazine.